Hello all and welcome to the journey into fatherhood. My name is Danica and I am the Community Education Facilitator at Sonare Center. And we have Henry, Joel and Jeff on our panelists for talking to the journey into fatherhood. Um, I would just like to thank you, thank you all for coming and start off this um, event with a quick land acknowledgement. Um, I acknowledge the land and the ancestors of the first peoples who walked the land for us, respect to the descendants who walked this land with us, and future generations who will walk when we have gone. Story Center is situated on Treaty 7 and Treaty 4 territory, the traditional lands of the Sikra, Blackfoot, Kainai, Blood, and Bikani, Pigani, Stony Nakoda, Tutana, Sikri, the Ekri, Swix, Asanaboin, and the Salt Toe Band of the Ojibwe, Ojibwe people. Um, these are also the homelands of the Métis people. Um, just a little bit of housekeeping before we start. For everyone in the audience, we are hosting this event on Zoom webinar. Therefore, your mics and camera will be disconnected to avoid any interruptions such as loud background noises and any other unintended distractions that could arise and disturb the event. Um, this event will also be recorded. You can find the recording of this event on Snari Center's YouTube channel. In addition to it, it will be linked on Snari Center and Pints with the Pack Facebook page. Joel, Jeff, and Henry will speak for roughly one hour with questions to follow. Um, you're welcome to sleep at any time as the recording will be up soon. We have a tendency to have a really rich discussions and that one hour usually expand into one and a half hours. So just to give you a heads up. Um, if you have any questions, you can put them in the Q&A chat, Q&A box or in the chat where we have our lovely Zoom Lord Veronica helping manage the questions and she is fire at putting awesome resources in there like awesome articles and videos. So make sure you keep an eye out on that chat as well. I uh, just want to give a little background on Pints of the Pack as well. Um, the group Pints of the Pack um, is the group hosting this event, this Unpacking Masculinity series that is, support, that is also supported by Next Gen Men and Scenario Center. So Pints of the Pack um, is a group that discusses positive masculinities and things that affect everyone, specifically men. And that is Pints of the Pack is located here in Medicine Hats, Alberta. In non-COVID times, they meet once a month to do this and create meaningful and authentic change. If you're interested in joining the group, all genders are welcome. Please contact info at scenariocenter.ca and we can get you included when public health orders allow for it. But for now, let's keep on enjoying the Unpacking Masculinity series here on Zoom. <laughs> so I just want to give a quick um, speaker introduction as well. So we got Jeff. Jeff Kerr has been married to his lovely wife, Kelsey, for eight years. They have a daughter who is almost two and are expecting their second baby this July. That is so exciting. Congratulations. Um, Jeff has worked in trades for nearly 15 years and recently has tr transitioned into management position in 2020. Over the past several years, Jeff expanded his, his passion for personal development and empowering men by becoming a certified life and relationship coach, as he believes communication and teamwork are the foundation for a solid relationship at work and at home. Awesome, and we welcome Jeff. Thank you so much for spending your Sunday morning talking about fatherhood. Um, Henry Barsh is 39 and married to his wife, Ava, for the last 17 years. He's a father to three amazing boys with great personalities. Kaya, 15, Keegan, 13, and his youngest, Lincoln, who was nine. Henry and Ava own their own business, Titan Exter Exteriors, located here in Medicine Hat for a number of years. Henry's hobbies include the odd game of golf, skate with the family, and get in men as many motorcycle bike rides as he can in the summer. So probably not today when we're starting to see a little bit of snow drizzle down here. Um, and then we have Joel. Um, Joel Bosch was born here and born and raised here in Medicine Hat, Alberta. He is a father of two, three boys and one girl between, eight, between the ages of four and nine while being together with his wife for 17 years, 11 and a half in which they've been married. 
Joel has been working in construction since his first summer out of high school and currently owns a construction company here in Medicine Hat. Joel is passionate about personal development and learning, which has led him to be being more active in the community in hopes of having a positive impact on those around him. This was a reason for joining Plants with the Pack two years ago, and also his reason for being here today. And thank you, Joel, for being here today as well. And I just want to give you a little bit of a presentation description. Um, I have a little quote from Joel. I was never given a manual on how to navigate the ups and downs of my own journey into fatherhood. And to be perfectly honest, I don't think it would have helped even if I did have one. In my opinion, the last thing I, a new parent needs is someone or something telling them what the perfect parent looks like or how a perfect relationship with your child and wife looks. Many times these manuals and people just offer us more ways for us to feel that we just don't measure up. Thank you for that, Joel. Um, Joel, Henry, and Jeff are not experts. They're just regular guys committed to the growth in their roles as a father and husband. They will explore the highs and lows along the way in hopes of demonstrating one simple fact, that you are not alone. Joel Bosch, Henry Barsh, and Jeff Kerr will share their story about their experience of being a father or becoming a father and what lessons they have learned as a result. Followed by a discussion, questions or comments are welcome at any time if they're able to touch on them at the event, at the, as the event proceeds, they will absolutely do so. The goal of this event is to lead and demonstrate the power of connection through shared experience. And with that, I will hand the virtual mic over to you guys. Thank you so much. Awesome, thanks, Danica. And uh, yeah, thanks. I'm very grateful for Tanari and Next Gen Men for, for doing all the work setting these events up. and and inviting us to be a part of it. So um, yeah, first of all, I just want to um, say how grateful I am for Jeff and Henry for, for being a part of this today with me. Um, I think one of the things definitely that I've learned in my journey into fatherhood is um, that, that the saying, what does it take? It takes a village to raise a child. Like that always popped up in my head and I, and I feel it's so true um, in a sense of like having you know, family and friends to support you. And, and what I've really learned over the last five to 10 years is having, you know, people like play like you guys, I've only known you for a couple of years, but having the, those male relationships in your life, um, I think is, it plays a huge role in just uh, having that support. Um, yeah, just to, to, to be there with you and guide you. And, uh, and I think really just to, to relate to in that connection piece. So um, thank you guys for, for being a part of this with me today. And uh, yeah, I, I think when I first started thinking about the doing the topic on fatherhood, um, a, a lot of things came to mind for me. Like I know being a part of Pints with the Pack, we've been doing it for about two years now. And I've always known it's it's meant a lot to me and it's really important. Um, but I think really thinking about my journey into fatherhood is really kind of when things came together for me. Um, I think... Uh, I kind of put it into perspective of why I'm here. So I wanted to just share a little bit of of my story and kind of where that came from. Um, I think it was about two months ago, I think, when I was starting to kind of to think about um, what I wanted to, to speak about for this topic. And um, I had a picture come across, I think it was on the computer, like a picture popped up of me and my wife. Um, I think our first born was a year old so it was we had gone out um it was in the prairie somewhere we hired a photographer and we got we were getting photographs taken of me and my wife and my one-year-old and I was just looking at this picture and you know it's just like the perfect family right like looking at this picture we were all smiling we we're all happy um but looking at it now like 10 years nine years later like I remember the feeling, I remember that day feeling like so scared, you know, and so like alone and, um, and just kind of like, yeah, just alone. I didn't have like, uh, the friends, um, around me that I needed, or I wasn't able to open up to my, my family and my friends. I, I kind of, I just remember that feeling at looking at that picture. And, and for me, it was just like, you know, I've come so far to today in my journey but you know 
kind of seeing that vision of where I was at eight years ago and what that felt like, I think kind of put things into perspective for me. Um, just really like, you know, I think, well, it actually got me, I think I, I, I kind of shared a bit of my story with these two guys about like, um, I think once I saw that picture, I, I kind of wrote down, like I had these kind of thoughts coming. I really wrote down my, my journey from that point. And uh, that's kind of what I wanted to, to share a little bit, but um, it kind of really is my why for being here today. Um, so yeah, I started writing that day and it was about, um, you know, looking back into my, you know, coming out of high school, coming out of school, I remember, um, I'd always, or even in school, like I really prided myself on figuring things out on my own. You know, even in school, I, I never wanted to ask questions. I never, I just, if I didn't know the answer to something in school, I didn't want to ask the question and look silly. So, um, I just kind of developed this, this system that I, that I had that worked that I would just figure things out on my own and, you know, and it worked pretty good. And then even out of high school, I got into construction and I kind of same mentality, I, you know, I don't know the answers. I don't know how to do this, but I could figure it out on my own. And it, for me, it really built a sense of pride. Like I was really proud of the fact that I could figure things out on my own and I didn't have to like go talk to my friends about it. I didn't have to tell anyone. I didn't know what I was doing. I could figure it out on my own and it, and you know, it really worked for me. And, and like I said, it was such a huge sense of pride. Um, and then it was kind of like fast forwarding to like this picture that I was looking at, like, you know, married, starting a new construction business, had our first, our first born. And I was still trying to figure things out on my own. Um, and it just, it worked until it really didn't. And, you know, I, uh, it was, it was so hard for me, such a hard transition of, um, you know, something that had worked and was such a sense of pride for me for so many years that now I kind of just found myself all alone trying to figure things out on my own. And, you know, that's one of my biggest regrets was um, not really being there for my wife when she needed me and my son, because I was just, I was trying to figure things out on my own. You know, I didn't want them to know that I was, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't want them to know that I was scared. You know, I wanted to be that that man has got it figured out and he can, he's the rock and he doesn't show emotion. So, you know, it's, it's just that, that feeling I'll, I'll never forget. And I think that's when I really learned the journey into fatherhood for me was when I really started to learn that, you know, I need, I need that support. I need those people around me. I need to, I need to be okay with not, not, not knowing how, how it all works and not knowing how to figure it out on my own. I need to be able to lean on people. And, and, you know, that was, for me, it wasn't easy, but I know it's, it's been a journey. Like our oldest is nine now and I'm still every day. Um, I feel like I'm up against those programs sometimes where it's like, I want to figure things out on my own, but I know it's not the way. And, you know, I want to, I want to be that, um, role model, role model for my kids that, uh, you know, I don't want them to grow up feeling the same thing that they got to, you know, try to battle through life on their own and figure it out on their own. Um, so really for me, it's really trying to lead by example. And, uh, and, you know, that's one reason why I've, I'm so, so grateful for, for people like you, Henry and Jeff, that I know, uh, I know anytime we've talked, I can pretty much share anything with you guys. And, you know, we've, we can all kind of relate and uh, we've, We've been through some of those similar experiences together and it just kind of makes you feel like you can tackle anything right when you got uh, got people around you that uh, support you and love you no matter what so um, so yeah that's kind of you know my why for being here today and, and a bit of a bit of a look into my journey into fatherhood um, and really I think my goal for today here too is really just like you know spreading that energy of love and support um, in, in anyone's journey of fatherhood, whether they're just beginning or, you know, or thinking about being a father or, you know, or a father and your kids are moved out. It's, there's so many different, obviously so many different levels of, of fatherhood and it, every, everyone's experience is going to be different. Um, but I think there's, there's, 
it, I mean, it's become so obvious to me that there's so many levels and so many experiences that we can, we can relate to each other and, and be there for each other. So, um, yeah, that's, that's a bit of my story and, and why I'm here today. So, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I, I know you guys have heard a bit of my story before, too, but um, you know, there's, there's certain things that you can relate to in that and have kind of jump out at you. Yeah, thanks for sharing that, Joel. Yeah, that's huge. I mean, there's so much in that that I relate. Uh, just thinking back kind of on my journey, how, how I've got into this. Uh, parenting <laughs> I remember when uh, I thought about it originally um, becoming a father terrified me um, and I, I can think back to a time where uh, somebody who's become uh, a pretty big mentor in my life um, I was having the discussion with them and um, I won't use the same words but uh, basically he told me he's like you you will screw it up and that's mm -hmm. okay um, we all do there's uh, like Joel's quote um, that he said, like, there's no manual to being a parent. Um, and I think it's, it's even true in, in the form that he says is like, I, I don't think that I would have really truly respected the information if I would have had it all before, um, if there would have been some type of manual, because um, we're not ready for that information, I guess, up front. Um, it is a journey. Um, much like this, you know, journey into fatherhood. Um, we build our story along the way. And I, you know, I, I can remember all the thoughts that went through my head. Um, when I found out I was going to be a dad, it's like, you know, are, are we ready? Um, have we even really lived our life yet? Uh, do we have enough money? Are we in the right position to um, become parents yet? Um, but, you know, looking back, uh, to, to all of the stages I I can re even remember um, when my daughter was born um, not to get into too many details but uh, just after she was born there was a little bit of complications and I remember the nurse handing me this brand new baby and um, because the nurses and the doctors were um, focusing on my wife and I I just sheer panic but sheer joy all at the same time because it's like Oh my goodness, what it, what what have I got myself into here? Um, but at the same point, just this little baby brand new to the world and like just instant love there. Um, it was it was an incredible time and and thinking now, um, you know, she's gonna be two here pretty soon. And you know, the the only real thing that she needs from me is uh, to be her dad um to be there for her and um you know just thinking about it she just wants my attention right to show me all the things that she's learning and and all of these exciting moments that she's got going on throughout the day um it's just an incredible time for me um to be able to spend that with her and and the time just flies and you know like joel had kind of mentioned there it's like we almost carry this chip on our shoulders as dads that, you know, we have all the answers or that um, we're always confident in, in what's going on and, and there's no worry there, but, you know, I, I never really knew worry or, or fear until um, I became a father, you know, like when, when my focus shifted from, from me and my wife to, um, you know, keeping this little human alive, um, and then, you know, I, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't fully understand that until I did become a dad that, uh, you know, it, we carry this around every day, you know, the, the constant worry of, are they okay? Are they happy? Are they sad? You know, that's, um, something that's, that's been eye opening to me. Um, the time flies. And it's, it's just, it really is an incredible experience. Um, but I didn't realize, you know, 
how much I valued, you know, my community, uh, the group of guys around me until, until I got into this, you know, that <laughs> kind of like Joel and, and Henry and I have talked about before, you know, um, being able to pick up the phone, knowing that we have this community around us, um, what uh, Pines at the Pack and those groups have, have created here is, is really incredible. And it's something that is truly needed for, for men um, today. And, uh, you know, I, I think I'm rambling here <laughs> now, but I, I could, I could literally talk about it for, for hours because it's, it's truly become a passion of mine, but, uh, you know, having this experience, being able to share this with you, with you guys, and it's, it's incredible. Um, it, it's taken, I guess, the weight of the world off my shoulders, knowing that there's, there's community like this around, there's there's always somebody that I can reach out to and, and share the wins, um, with guys like you. And, and also, um, you know, when, when things get a little bit, uh, uncomfortable that there's guys that'll listen as well. So. Well, I got a question for you just, um, regarding when you were saying you were in school, um, thinking you got it all kind of figured out this whole thing that we, maybe I and you, well, we've all discussed it's kind of like an Island to ourselves, uh, what, what have you noticed, like raising your, your boys, maybe in not trying to pass that along of feeling this need of figuring things out on my own, um, having the, like having the freedom maybe to ask, uh, for help when you need it, instead of just feeling like you are on your own. Like, I think that's still some of my struggles of love seeing it in my boys of, you know, I'd like for them to figure it out on their own so they can problem solve. But at the same time, I don't want them to feel the need to always have to figure it out on their own. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. And uh, yeah, I, th I think the part of that, like it is, I think there is a positive element to that, right? To, you know, you want, I, you know, I'm the same. I do want my kids to be able to, to tackle things and figure some things out on their own. But I think, I think just like letting them know, just like I had to let myself know that like, it is okay to, for sometimes that to not be able to figure it out on your own or to ask for help. Um, so I know like something I, I try to do, I still really work on is like, you know, and I think to try and show them is I'll admit when I've made a mistake or when I've done something wrong, like I'll like, you know, sometimes sit down with my kid and be like, like, like I messed up or, you know, I, you know, I made a mistake and I didn't, I thought I knew what I was doing and I, I, I was wrong. Like, just kind of like, as a parent, sometimes it's, it's, it seems natural to like, always want to be right. You know, you always want to tell your kids like, I know best, I know best, but it's like, sometimes I feel like it's just okay to be like, sorry, like I messed that up, you know? And I, and I think that's like a way of letting them maybe feel like it's sometimes they can be like, you know, I, I don't know how to do this or I'm, I'm yeah, I don't know how to figure this out or I like to just admit there when they're in the field the same way. So I try to do that. Like it's a, it's kind of a, a daily practice because um, yeah, like I said, it's for whatever reason, it was ingrained in me from a kid to, to feel like I needed to figure things out. So, um, I'm definitely something I think about a lot though. Comes a learning experience, right? Yeah. Yeah. So cool. But yeah. I know. And we, I mean, me and Henry talked a little bit about that. Like, I guess the three of us, we have kids at different stages. Um, and so I was 25, I think when we had our first. Henry, I think you said you were around like 20 or 21. I was at 22 when I had my first 22. one. Yeah. yeah. And Jeff's a little more recent here. So I, I, yeah. I kind of, one of the things I thought of too, is just curious, like, I think, I mean, I feel like, you know, the age you're at or where you're at when you have kids and when you step into that fathership role, like it plays such a huge role, I think. Like, I mean, as a younger dad and Henry, I you could probably relate to like, you know, I, at that point, I really still felt like I was figuring out who I was, you know, mm -hmm. and then to like step into a fathership role, it's, you know, maybe that's really part of it. Like, it's a lot to, to go through in those younger years. So yeah, sometimes I look at you, Jeff, and I'm like, yeah, he's got to figure it out. He, uh, he's, you know, <laughs> he's got more wisdom and experience stepping into that role. But um, yeah, so I don't know if Henry, if you wanted to touch on that, because I know, like, yeah. I mean, when I was 25, I, th I thought I was like, I had it all figured out and I was, and yeah. I was old when you're in your twenties, you feel like you're, you got a lot of experience, but. Yeah. Well, that's back. something that, yeah. Something that Ava and I kind of did discuss, you know, wanting to have children 
kind of at a younger age. Uh, I think it was more from a selfish standpoint because we still wanted to be younger when they grew up and grew out and we could still kind of enjoy the world around us, right? Without feeling like, oh man, you know, we, we kind of missed the mark sort of thing, right? So I think we were thinking a little bit too far in advance, but, uh, but you're right, as a father, like, um, at that time, I don't know if I was I was worried or if I had that fear. I think maybe I was just naive to the fact I was becoming a father. You know, marriage was a big deal for me. It's like, oh man, I'm I'm getting married. This is that scared me as a as a man. Like now I have to, you know, support another person. I have to think about mortgage. I have to, you know, like that's kind of what it all did for me. Um, and then having, you know, a boy at 22 years old. I think I was kind of naive to the fact of the responsibility that I was to carry. Um, and then I would say maybe a few months into it is when it kind of like really sat with me, like, wow. And just kind of going through the same experiences you did, Joel, with um, just feeling like you had to figure everything out all on your own. Um, we were new running the business too. I was, I still was trying to figure out who I was as an individual, let alone try to figure out who I was as a husband or as a father, you know, and then to fit, how am I going to impact my community with my business and what that's going to look like. So it consumed a lot of my time. But I think when the reality really sat in, I, I got into a state of, um, I would say, uh, depression almost because there was so much pressure and not wanting to share with anybody for the sheer fact of being made look like maybe I was, I was dumb, you know, um, or, what were you thinking or you should have it figured out. And so then I just, I kind of kept that. Oh, did we lose Henry? I think we did. Uh, all right, well, hopefully he can jump Hops back, back on yeah um i i saw there's someone had put in the chat there about who what role models did i have growing up um i think definitely my dad um was a huge role model for me i think um yeah he was he was always always such a, a loving caring father that um i couldn't have asked for a, you know a better upbringing better family and um, and I think that was something that even really, it, I mean, when I was in that time of, you know, feeling depressed, like it almost weighed on me. Right. Cause I felt like I, I was, it was given such a great upbringing, a great family to like, I felt like admitting that I was struggling or having troubles at that time in my life was like, almost like it was like a guilt, like I felt guilt, right? Like, why do I feel depressed? Why do I feel like, you know, why do I feel this way? Like I was given such a, I have so much, so much great family around me, but I think it was, it was just kind of that, that thought process I had and where it took me and kind of to, you can have all the love and support around you, but if you, if you don't let them in, you know, if you kind of close them out, then um, yeah, you can, you can feel pretty alone. So uh, I think that's just kind of when I recognized that, you know, it was on me. I was my responsibility to, to change, um, kind of my thought process and change how I was being and really kind of let people in and, um, and, and yeah, that was kind of really the start of the process of, you know, growing my relationships and finding other men in my life that I could, could talk to and, um, yeah, and kind of start that journey. Did you ever reach out to your dad or chat with him about that? um a little bit um not specifically no um i mean we've had lots of lots of good conversations i mean he's always there and always this he always listens to when when i'm ready to talk so um yeah we've had a, a few good conversations and he's uh i was born um there my parents are very religious in a catholic family and I think he's always really sharing some of some of that with me, and I think it's, it's it played a big role in my life growing up. I, I kind of no, always have known that, um, yeah, just that spiritual background that really I think has been pretty impactful for me in my life too. So it's interesting the perspective on it too, right? When when we become parents, 
um, looking back at, at the situations growing up, um, you know, of what our parents would have gone through to raise us, you know, like I, I, I look back and, you know, I, I had a pretty good upbringing as well. I, my parents, uh, they divorced um, when I was pretty young, but they, they still really tried to remain the focus on us kids, um, not their relationship and bringing yeah. that in. Um, but, you know, like I think back now on, you know, the fear that they must have gone through raising us. Um, you know, there, there wasn't, <laughs> I don't think there was as many resources out there at that time, you know, if, if they were struggling or, or needed something, um, you know, I can even think back to a few moments when, you know, I would have been frustrated as a, as a child and, and just thinking on those situations, what, what that would have looked like for my parents, you know, mm-hmm. what, what they must've been going through, um, you know, cause I became a, a dad, um, right around the same time that my dad would have, um, or same age anyways. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a different perspective when you can look on it. Like, you know, they were just doing the very best that they could at that time. And, and that's what we're doing today is, you know, the very best with what we have in front of us to, to help our kids, um, on their journey through life. So it's, it's interesting. Yeah, I remember doing like I remember doing a an exercise, kind of like a meditation, and it was it was exactly that. Like I remember the yeah the exercise was like sort of like putting yourself in your your dad's shoes and like visualizing what he was like at your age. And I remember doing that exercise, and it was like it was yeah, it's like I could instantly like felt absolutely connected to my dad. Like I could see him like like it was me sitting here now, right? Like, you know, like just doing the best I could. And it was just like, wow, like, yeah, like, you know, that's, (laughs) that's fatherhood for you right there. We're all just, you know, in this, in this journey, doing the best we can. And, um, you know, we all make mistakes and and having some empathy and, and uh, yeah, really understanding. Oh, there he is. We're back. He's he's (laughs) back. I don't know if you, if you remember sure. right where we were, where you were, you can <laughs> <laughs> just carry on your computer crash on you. Yeah. I don't know. Just, just everything dropped off and uh, just try to get in a new link going here. And um, yeah, it seems like everything is just kind of went down here. So um, either way um, I, yeah, if, if that's where we're at, I can, I can kind of figure out where we were and go from there. So I was just, uh, just mentioning, um, that yeah, kind of going into a state of depression. That's kind of where I was at, wasn't I, Joe? Somewhere in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just feeling that pressure of having to um, to do this on my own and and not really um, wanting maybe or feeling like I could reach out for you know just maybe feeling shamed or just not having it together. Um, partially in the way I was raised as well like you got to make sure you have everything together and everything on the outward everything has to look good so we got this big uh, shiny apple syndrome kind of thing going on where on the outside things look like yeah you know you got good looking family you know a young little boy and you know they've got a business everything looks good but the pressure on the inside of me was just it was phenomenal and um, through that I ended up uh, you know taking on alcohol and 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 prior to my marriage, I never really struggled with, with alcohol at all. But, um, so I went on a, a long journey of, of becoming addicted to alcohol and, um, yeah, not, not being the father that I thought I was going to be to my first son. Like I was, I was excited when he came into the world and, uh, the things that we would do together and, and then, yeah, just, I think, finding out kind of where I was with myself and, and not really knowing what direction I was going in my own life. It's like, how am I going to pour that into this young sibling, you know, like this, or sorry, this young child? Like, I just, I couldn't grasp that, you know, like what I felt on the inside, I did not want to pass that on to my son. And then, you know, a few years later, I'm uh, still trying to keep it all together and, and not really asking for help. And I mean, we had a community around us, um, but never really utilizing it to the fullest. And then, you know, we had our second born and um, things didn't really get much better. I was, you know, Ava really needed me 
um, to be a part of this family and to to make some of the hard decisions on what it means to raise these boys and to grow up to be men of integrity. And I literally just checked out, you know, it's like, I, I will not impart what I feel on the inside of me um, to these young boys. I just, I just, I don't want, I don't want any part of that. And so I just, I was fighting this battle for a number of years um, and then eventually having to go to, to rehab to get some recovery just because I just couldn't handle it any longer. Um, and, and through that process of being at rehab and being away from at that time now, I've had three, um, just to reflect um, and sober thoughts and to be able to hear my thoughts and be able to identify with what is a lie about myself and things that I have, you know, programs that I have put in place for my life to protect, you know, maybe a facade or who I thought I might have been or who I wanted to be instead of who I actually was and what I was created for. Um, that's when it really sank into me, you know, for fatherhood. Wow, like this is this is huge. And and you're not you're not alone in this. Like there's so many men out there um, that are there to support you and that have the same struggles and 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 to be together to be able to help one another is incredible so um yeah that, it, that's where it really really shifted for me to be able to to see then finally their their unique personalities um their unique ways of you know just doing life and and how they respond to different situations and now i can pull myself back and 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 just kind of sit down with them at their level um, and just enjoy them for where they are and what they're going through and to just be vulnerable and real with them and, and just letting them know that, you know, Hey, I don't have it all together. This, this is, these are kind of my areas of, of struggle and what I wrestle with and, and not to an uncomfortable place, but just kind of a, a recognition that, Hey, dad, dad's not always, doesn't always have it together, but it doesn't mean he's not going to try. He's going to do what it takes to make sure that they have what they need and and I will always be there and to love them and to support them. And uh, it's it's a constant state of growth um, and, and now trying to figure out a new state of um, a boy turning 16 here and driving and getting into a relationship on his own with somebody else, right? It's it's uh, from having young ones where I feel like I've kind of, I kind of missed it almost in a sense. Um, but now with, five years being sober and being able to be present and and father them and love them and help them along the way um it, it to me it just it's mind-blowing at how easy they are to forgive and and they still want you to be their hero and they still want you to be a big part of their life and it's it's so humbling to me to to be able to recognize that in my children and for my you know close to be 16 year old like i was saying to get into a relationship it's 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 hard it's 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 a growth point it's like okay you're going to be experiencing some completely new emotions and feelings and and how do i as a father guide you into that you know like there's parts of me where i still want to be able to protect him um and 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 coach him and but also be able to trust him that that he can make good choices right so um yeah i've had quite the roller coaster of a journey, um, but I feel like, you know, currently knowing that you guys are are there, and you know, there's there's men out there that that we can we can talk to and that we can be real with, and and it's okay. Everyone's journey is a little bit different, um, but the end game is is fatherhood. We have it inside of us to be able to pour into these little guys and to grow them up to be men of integrity, and that's like my biggest heart right now is to see my, my little guys turn into incredible men in, in this community and to be able to lead, you know, one day, hopefully their families as well. So, but yeah, that's kind of, kind of my journey there um, on that. Have, have you uh, like, have you shared like kind of like some of your, I, I know your oldest is you said 16 or just turning 16 like have you shared or had kind of conversations about kind of your your past with them like is that kind of like known to them or is it um yeah it's it's very real to my oldest one i think yeah. my my uh my younger two um they're i they're just in a place of 
like they they feel relaxed in knowing that dad's a safe place and um that's good but my oldest boy kai he had to live through um some pretty traumatic events um going through my alcoholism um and then him feeling the need um we've talked this through and he would attest as well that he felt the need to take on the responsibility as a father to these other boys and that breaks my heart to think that I took the responsibility that I was to carry and pass that on to him because of the the lack of worth that I felt inside of myself. And 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 that was I think like when I sit with him sometimes it's it's really hard to still, you know, see and feel the reality of what once was. Um but the conversations we can have now and the trust that we have now it's it sometimes feels unwarranted, but the there's there's a sense of respect there and an acknowledgement of what once was and and where it is now and that it'll never go back to where it was before um there's things that he shouldn't have had to learn growing up younger than that he did um but he also has responded and saying you know it's shaped me to be um an incredible little guy you know like he makes very very aware decisions in his life you know he doesn't just do things for the sake of doing it like he he definitely weighs out what's the consequence going to be here is it going to be a good consequence or is it going to be a bad consequence and so i mean there's a lot of good that's come of it but it was definitely a painful journey and i do feel that i robbed him of a lot of joy um growing up um but nothing that couldn't be made up for now like our relationship is is honestly is just on such a such a good place right now that i i wouldn't trade that for anything i would i would give up like everything to be able to keep that relationship the way it is and i'm just so grateful to that yeah it's yeah, huge it's it's yeah, it's, it's, huge. it's incredible that you know that that you guys can share that bond now and you know what what that has shaped him into as a human being now um mm-hmm. and and what he'll carry through life with him with what he's learned from from those conversations from those uh situations and and for you to be able to say that you know he he takes a step back and and looks at the decisions he's making now like that's that's almost a superpower um mm-hmm. in the age that he is now um being able to have that awareness in life and in what he's doing like that's it is incredible how how you got there and 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 how that took form um mm-hmm. it, it's it's unbelievable the impact that it's had on both of you but but what he'll be able to take into life uh now what he's learned is is cool yeah yeah, it's it, it's kind of a bittersweet in both both ways, right? But there there are some things that he's had to learn along the way, um, and then there's there you know there's a lot of independence in him as well, right? So like he does feel, um, and this is why I asked you earlier, Joel, kind of like uh, what what you practice now to not pass on that 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 the need to do things on your own or you know, the individualism type of thing, right? And that, I think th- those are things that we're still wrestling with him because he's he's such a smart boy. You know, he's the valedictorian. He was in, in grade nine and, and going into all of his grades, he's always in 90s and up. So he's a really smart boy. And so the, the need to be right and then also um, feeling like he can do this on his own, um, those, are, those are two things that we still... Um, that we work on you know those are those are challenges that um that are there and and they're great because we can we can we can wrestle through them at the table and and still like he feels comfortable enough to be able to like share his experiences and why he needs to react or respond that way you know um and then we can we can talk that through and then it's honestly it's the relationship, yeah, I just keep getting back to that. Like the relationship that I have with all three of them, especially the oldest one, because of what he's all gone through, um, it, it seems unwarranted, <laughs> you know. But it's it's there, and I'm I'm grateful to that. Just really grateful to that. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's tr- it's so true too. Like, I mean, like all those experiences, right? Like for you or for for our kids, like any of those kind of times that are a little 
you know, are tough or a little bit of a struggle, I think, always taking the, the positives out of it. Like you said, you know, all, all that has given you the gift of that relationship, right? Um, and I think that's something to, I think we can try to instill in our kids too, is like even, even, even through those tough times, like you can always find a positive, right? If, if, if you look for it um, and yeah. just trying to take that into every, every area of your life. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So Jeff too, I don't know you, like I said, you got the perspective of, of entering fatherhood later into your life. I don't know if you, uh, if, if, if things, things look different kind of jumping into fatherhood in, in your kind of phase of life or, or what your experience has been uh, you know it's interesting i i read a meme the other day that kind of says you know i used to look at people in their 30s thinking you know they've got it all together and then <laughs> here i am um and and it, it's <laughs> i'm still trying to figure it out so um, I think a lot of what you guys have shared today, I, I still feel the same way, um, that it, it is, it's a journey to me. Um, I think maybe, uh, some of the personal development work that I've, I've been able to do, um, that led me into, I guess, being open to being a father, um, that helped me work through some of that fear, um, has definitely supported me in, in, um, working through this journey, but, uh, I, I still come up against a lot of the same, same things that you guys have shared today, you know, um, the feeling that, you know, we need to have all of the answers, um, getting it right all the time. Um, I don't know that that would really, uh, from my perspective, I guess, I don't know that, um, you know, becoming a father um, in my 30s uh, really shifted any of that. I, I still feel like I, I'm, I'm up against the same um, kind of fears and struggles that you guys have mentioned. Um, I guess maybe one thing that I can say to that is, you know, uh, having a community like this or having a little bit of awareness has, has let me know that, that I've got the support out there. Um, you know, even just conversations like this, um, knowing that we're not alone has, has definitely supported me in that. Um, the one thing that, that gives me extreme joy is, you know, knowing that, you know, you guys and, and how you're shaping your kids, um, through life experience, through passing the knowledge and things along, um, even having the open, vulnerable conversations like this um, that are supporting our kids, just, you know, it gives me the hope that, you know, for my daughter that, you know, there, there's good men out there that, you know, she'll be around as, as she grows up, you know, um, whether that's friends, whether that's, uh, you know, down the road, that's, that's a husband, you know, knowing that those positive relationships are out there to help support her through her journey in life. Um, not just from a father perspective, but, you know, for, for siblings, for friends, um, it, 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 it definitely helps, helps me, takes a little bit of weight off of me as a father, knowing that, you know, there, there are good people out there that, that are all around her that can support in that. So. I don't know if that answered your question, yeah, well, Joel, well, or not, but. Well, no, sort of, yeah. I think it made me think of, and we, I think we talked about this before, it made me think of like that feeling of, of not being ready, right? And I think I know if every every child we had, I didn't, you know, didn't feel like I was ready, you know? And, and then I've, I've kind of noticed that reoccurring theme in my life. And like, I think kind of knowing what what's meaningful to you and stepping into that, even, you know, if you don't, feel ready I feel like that's kind of just a natural part of life so you know and that's something I do I want to lead by example for my kids I'm like you know if you're gonna wait till you feel ready to to do something it's it, it may never happen right and I think as a leader and as a father it's like you know even like doing something like this with you guys it's like you can have you know this week I had a day I didn't feel like the greatest father in the world and then it's like you know who am I to to, to do a, a an event on fatherhood you know it's like I'm 
I'm nothing special. I'm still figuring it out, but it's like, you know, I know this is meaningful to me. Um, and just being okay with that of not feeling ready or not feeling, you know, you're, everyone's going to have those days where you maybe don't feel like enough, but that's, that's why it's so important to, to have these people, people around you that, that care about you and can say, Hey, <laughs> talk some sense into you some days, right. And, and remind you of all the, all the good things you're doing. So um, that's why I'm so grateful for you too. Oh, that's, that's huge. Uh, I, I think about that now, you know, that we're, we're expecting our, our second in July. And, you know, even though I've, I've been down the road, uh, um, a couple of years now with our first, it's going into the second a baby. I'm like, what, a, what am I forgetting? What, a, what am I not, <laughs> what am I not ready for here? You know, um, did you guys, do you go ahead and find out what you're having or do you know? We, we have an envelope um, <laughs> that we've had for, for almost a month and a half now. Um, but we haven't opened it yet. And, you know, it's that, that's the interesting part now is like, you know, I'm, I'm calm about that. I, I, I don't have, I don't care either way. I'm just happy, healthy baby mm -hmm. um, is what I'm excited about. Um, and I, and the, the, the scary part for me is like, you know, we don't have that rest period before like we did with our first. We have a two-year-old now that, that's running around with, with chaos and, and excitement um but you know just you know looking at looking up to you guys and you know um you've you've been down this road before you you figured it out you, you still had the same um uh, feelings of fear uh through those stages you know it's it's normal I guess that's the piece for me is understanding that, that everybody goes through it it's part of the journey right yeah Yeah, absolutely. Just don't do one of those like baby reveal parties where they like stick it in, <laughs> when they stick it in a balloon and then the balloon blows away. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. See yeah. a question in the chat there that uh, is kind of an interesting one. I think this might be for you, Henry, but it's um, what challenges have you faced in raising your daughters? No, I think that might be for you. I don't have any daughters. I think it's just me and you. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Well, my, yeah, our daughter is our youngest, so she's four. Um, so I guess there's probably lots of challenges to come, I think. But uh, um, I think for us, like me and my wife both, like we, we really, I think from the start, like we never wanted to really treat our, our daughter like, really different you know like to treat boys like oh like you know rough and tumble play with boy toys and then her daughter i know my wife always said like she didn't want her daughter to be a to be a princess like the last thing she wanted was like a little princess but uh it's just funny like for me like we had three boys and then our fourth was a girl and just seeing like their differences like it seemed it was so apparent like i think for the first few years like we never even bought like kind of felt bad for like we didn't even really like buy her toys like she just played with what the boys played with and she loved them and um and she just yeah but her personality and she's now she's the one singing and dancing around and the boys like they there's I really kind of noticed the real difference in personality and just you know I'm just we just embrace her like whatever she wants to do and just like let her be her own being and and uh yeah and she's a sweetheart so um it's funny. I don't know the, the story of that too. Like we, we were done after three. Um, I actually had a procedure and then she was like a surprise, like meant to be like against all odds. She was born. Um, and yeah, it, it was, uh, it was meant to be for sure. And like, you know, that was another thing. Like we were done at three, the decision was made, but, um, yeah, she was not saying no. She was coming into this world no matter what. And it's, you can't imagine, I can't imagine my life without her, right? Like it's, you know, having three boys and then a girl, it's, it's been pretty special. So um, I'm excited to see how, how, I don't know how their relationship and how they evolve and grow up and 
Uh, she's got three older brothers that'll take care of her and and uh, protect her, but I feel like she's probably going to give them a run for their money. So she's a pretty tough cookie. <laughs> it's good she came out a fighter. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's huge. That's you know, like you've kind of said, it, it was uh, no special treatment or anything like that. You know, wanting her to to be strong. That's that's a big piece and how my wife and I are, are working to raise our daughter is, you know, my, my wife's pretty strong willed and, uh, uh, a big fighter herself. And, you know, that's, that's an important part to me is, you know, my daughter always knowing that, that she can, anything that she puts her mind to, um, she can, and, and knowing that I'll support her in that, um, you know that that with that there's there's failures there's struggles that come through but uh it's always going to be a learning opportunity um and that's that's you know i guess as a father one of my biggest fears is you know my my daughter coming up against that but knowing that you know she's got the support around her to to work through um all of those all of those um uh, struggles and and uh things that she goes through on her journey um, but I, uh, I think only being two years old, I, I haven't got to the, <laughs> to the, uh, hardest part of that yet. So it, it's going to be a, a learning opportunity for me along the way. Yeah. And it, uh, it happens quickly. I'd imagine Henry, you can probably attest to that too. They, they grow up quick. I can see it already. Yeah, they do. They certainly do grow up quick. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, to, to be able to seize the moments that you have with them is is so important. And, and uh, Jeff, you were saying something about it's it's a journey, and it really is. It's it's a journey, and and watching them become who they're you know who they want to be or who they're designed to be is it happens so fast. And the distractions around um, they don't often help. Um, but I think during the season that we're living in currently. Um, just with being able to be at home, um, you know, we have our challenges not being able to go out. But I think one of the highlights for me of this season is that to get to know my three little guys that much better yet and to see how they respond to the state that the world's in and the lockdowns and just having to adjust to different teaching methods and things like that and then try to navigate that Um it's, it's been important for me to, to stay calm in this as well, because it's easy to just have high energy about it and get, you know, get frustrated because we, we can't get to what we called once normal to where it is today. So to be able to have a level head and go, okay, you know what, this isn't going to stay forever. We'll get through this. We'll help you guys through this. And um, it's, it's been, it's been honestly relationally on, on like the family it's been good. It's been really good to, you know, we haven't played as many card games as we have during this past year and, and just bought new games at the table. We sit around the table and we play cards. Like there's been you know, a lot of video games going on. Like the three boys, they love connecting online with their friends and, and, and playing that way. But, but then there's lots of times where we just sit around the table and we play and, and just get to know one another. And so, I think for that part, this season has been, it's been great. So to watch them become during the season is, has been really cool, you know? So I've, I think that's probably one of my highlights of this season. Yeah. That we're in right now is to, to be able to be a firm father um, in this and knowing that, Hey, you know what, this, this isn't going to last. Um, and this is, let's take advantage of what we have right now. And enjoy one another because we've been so distracted you know like the business can take so much from me um the schoolwork and their friends can take so much from them you know in different sports activities we're always running in so many different directions and now being forced to stand still and to look at one another and get to know one another is it's been good i've it's it's been challenging but it's been it's been really good it's been great so yeah yeah, definitely a lot more, like you said, home time, like time at home with the family. And uh, yeah, I think that's, that is a definite positive. You know, sometimes we, I guess with four of us too, it's like we, 
we need to get outside and go find something to do. But I think that closeness of kind of, yeah, like you said, not so busy. I feel like our, our kids are a bit younger, but I'd imagine your age too, like you get into sports and stuff and it's like, you're going a hundred miles an hour in 10 different directions. And mm -hmm. I think kind of simplifying your life a little bit and um, it, it can be good, right? Like just a little more one-on-one yeah. -on -one time at home. And I think that that definitely is, is valuable too. Yeah. Well, yeah, like for us, like we, we just sit back and just kind of reevaluate, reevaluate our life as a, as a family. Like, like, where are we as a family? Is this kind of where we wanted to be? Is this where we thought we would see ourselves being? And, and it's okay that we are where we are. Um, and then just, just taking a personal inventory of, Hey, you know, where, where, where are we at? And um, relationally, where are things at? And, and how do the siblings, you know, um, speak to one another? How do they relate to one another? Do they have a great connection? Or is it all just in passing? Because that's how it's been for so long is just always in passing, you know, one's playing this sport, and then they're gone. And then I'm taking the other ones to a different direction. And so it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's good to get a break, but it's, it's great to have that, that perspective on, on, you know, making the most of what we have currently. Yeah. The, the family audit, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's a powerful tool. Absolutely. It um, it's, you know, like you said, the season that we're in, we we've, if we can step back and really look at it, we've been given a gift um, oh, absolutely. as a family, right. To, to be able to, to reconnect and, and embrace this time. Like you said, you know, playing games as a family, like that, that was something that we, we, and got away from um you know i i look at it from from my perspective is you know i i'm super grateful but i i've been able to shift to working from home so you know it, it's five minutes here ten minutes there you know when i go upstairs to grab a coffee like being able to to see my family where you know once i left and went to the office i was i was gone for the day so so mm -hmm. embracing those little little moments right yeah it's super powerful yeah, I see uh, there's a question, and I think, Henry, you kind of touched on it a bit too, but uh, there's a question. How have you guys worked through leading your family and fathering and also balancing the time to build and work in your business? Um, yeah, I think, I mean, you kind of touched on that too, and I know, Jeff, you're, you're working from home too, so it's like, I guess it's a different balance, right? But I feel like there is a lot of positives that can be taken out of it for sure. Yeah, absolutely. You know, being able to, to work from home, like I said, being able to see the family. Um, but one thing that, that this has kind of all taught me, and I think that's with having young kids or young kid right now, another one coming is um, understanding how quickly that time goes. So, you know, work is one thing. Um, you know, my wife works for, she's an entrepreneur herself. Um, working to find that balance and understanding there's not a perfect answer for it. But um, the, the thing that I've learned is uh, work will always be there. Um, mm -hmm. Being able to set the boundaries for myself that, you know, like it, it's family time. Um, you know, I can, I can schedule work in at another point, but uh, you know, when my daughter wants to see me or show me what she's learned that day, um, being present in that because like I said the, the time flies and then it's uh it's time we don't get back so that's mm -hmm. that's been one of the biggest pieces for me is just the awareness that um you know being present as a father is is just as important as as I guess work and providing for the family um and it's every day it's it's just a choice and and <laughs> some days I get it right some days I don't but uh mm -hmm. I think that's the biggest piece that I'm, I'm still learning in, in business and, and work myself. Yeah. yeah. I, you, I think you said it right there with uh, being present. Like when you have the opportunity to be present, to, to be fully present, to be, to be there. Right. Um, like for me, I'm still out and about quite a bit. So my day to day doesn't change much. Um, but boundaries that I've put in place for myself is the weekends are mine, you know, like um, I don't, I don't answer my, my work calls on, on weekends. It's just, it's not going to happen. Uh, there's more important things, anything and everything can wait till Monday. Um, and, and same thing within the evenings. It's, it's so easy for me to consume myself with work because it's, it's our livelihood. It's, it's what pays the bills. It's what's going to take the boys to college. It's what's going to, you know, 
keep that all kind of spinning. Um, it's so easy for that. So, but there's, it's, it's been healthier, uh, relationally. And, um, for me personally, owning a business is to be able to set boundaries and times aside where, you know, if you do have an emergency line where you need to be able to reach 24 hours a day to, to, to hire a service that can take those calls or just to be able to have emails that can get forward off to somebody else to delegate, to be able to take that pressure off. Right. So that you don't feel solely responsible all the time to keep the thing rolling. Right. So yeah, it's been, it's been huge for me to be able to set that aside and yeah, to delegate and then to be, to be fully present when, when you have that time. Yeah. I, I still remember like, uh, I think it was like a prenatal class at me and, me and Anne went to like before we had our first was I remember one of the things she said was like yeah like having that connection with your with your with your children right and she said like it doesn't always maybe look like you think it does she's like if you know getting down on down to their level and like looking them in the eye and having like a two-minute conversation with them like making that eye connection she's like that's that's what they're looking for that's what they want like to really just so it doesn't have to be like you know, a two hour event to like spend time with them. It's like just little moments here and there of getting down and, you know, making that eye connection and listening to them. It's like, it's pretty simple, but it's, I mean, it sounds simple, but it's just, you know, sometimes we get so busy that we, we forget that that's all they really want. Right. Yeah. That's huge. <laughs> I know I, I've been working on it with my daughter because it's, it's easy when you got your phone and you're just answering questions and um, it, it, I, I've even found with her when she gets kind of watching her shows, um, we ask her a question and she's either zoned out or um, just throws out no, because that's just what's become kind of normal for her. So I've noticed the shift with me is like, I, I do, I get down to her level. I, I say, you know, look at daddy, eye contact kind of thing. And then her her focus shifts in, in the questions that I'm asking her and just working on that and like uh, I'm just as guilty <laughs> for for being dialed into my phone or answering a message or something like that it's it I I'm starting to recognize it with her so it's it's become kind of my number one priority now is um, we're going to work on that and and like you said Joel the the eye contact you know understanding that that we're one-on-one -on -one, um, is, is a big piece Mm -hmm. um yeah i think there was a couple other questions here we'll maybe just kind of throw these questions out here and kind of guess we can start wrapping it up it's it's been like an hour and 10 minutes already right time flies <laughs> um but i saw these in the chat i didn't see them but um did you ever find your words do you ever find your words to your children coming back back to you out of their mouths um I, I can't think of it exactly, but absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah, Henry, if you have any uh, stories well, maybe you'd like to share? <laughs> uh, no, I don't. <laughs> no, I don't think there's any specific things. I, I, I do know with the oldest one, there's been a few things where I've said certain things and, and then he'll come back and he'll question like, hey, but you said this and now, you know, uh, those kind of scenarios, right? So, but yeah, they're yeah, it's, it's good to be aware of, of what, what you're saying, you know, and uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's funny to me because I know that there's been many of situations where that's what come about. Right. So, yeah. They're just sponges. Yeah. You realize that they hear, hear everything you say and even the things you don't say, I think they still. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's so true. Um, and then the other one was, has your relationship with your spouse changed since you had children? Did you seek out their support when you struggled and were they there for you? Um, 100%. Like I know, yeah, like I know for myself too. Yeah, it's it's definitely it's definitely changed, I think. And that's been a journey in itself too, is um, finding ways to be there for each other then kind of, I guess, understanding. I think sometimes, I know for myself, I think I know what support my wife needs, but it's... It's not actually what she needs. It's what I think she needs. So it's like that conversation of like, I guess, being open with, with what your needs are. And, you know, cause I think sometimes you, we think we're, we're being supportive and doing things they want, but it's not the case always. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's something that my wife and I have worked on, on a lot is being able to ask when we need it. Um, 
and also you know being comfortable in asking each other when we need that time I know for for her being with our daughter all day um you know by by the evening she's ready for for a bit of a break so you know understanding that that we're a team and being able to kind of lean into one another when we need it and um, I think that's been one of the biggest changes in our relationship um, from when our daughter was born is I think we've become more of a team but it it's taken a lot of work Um, it's come with its struggles as well but uh, being there for one another and and asking I think that's sometimes the 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 hardest part is is asking for the support when you need it but um, being open to it when when those questions do come up it's not always easy but (laughs) yeah I know for me too like the relationship uh, definitely changed um and and what we've found is that to be brutally honest in in how we're kind of feeling and what we're going through and and just sharing that with one another and and being okay with it not feeling attacked one way or the other um with me having to go out to work and and my wife being like at home more with the boys than than i am there's different needs that she has right and then for her to be able to vocalize that and and me not feeling like it's it's an attack on me or it's anything. It's just maybe she needs a bit of alone time or it's like she needs us time. Right. And then to be able to communicate that properly and to let that take place. Right. So, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it, I think the relationship gets better. Um, yeah. The, the more open and honest and, and raw you become, it, it sometimes sounds really strange, you know, when I listen to how we talk to one another, but we're just communicating our needs and where we are currently. And, and there's, there's nothing wrong with it, but I, uh, I'm, I'm grateful for that. I just believe that's a growth in our relationship for sure. That's a big, big one there, Henry. Uh, it's, you know, what, what we need in our relationships, right. As parents um, it's, I think it's been misconstrued in the, in the past is like kids are number one uh spouse number two and then ourselves number three and it's I think it's completely backwards you know we need to we need to be there for ourselves number one um to be able to give that energy um and then there for our spouse to support them and and through that it it allows us to be the very best parents and then be a team for our children so yeah absolutely like it's the whole leader of of self kind of thing right like to be to be the leader you want for your kids you, it's kind of doing it by leading by example right like um, being a leader of self um for sure i saw that uh is that veronica did did any of you take a parental leave i don't know if i've ever asked any <laughs> of you that but no nope. no i was going to with my with my daughter and then obviously we had the the uh COVID came in and it kind of shifted a bunch of things. So it changed, I guess, a little bit of our family dynamic, but uh, I was looking into it for, for Hadley. Um, I was going to take a bit of a leave halfway through. Cool. Um, well, yeah, thanks guys for, uh, for doing this. Yeah. Or are you coming to shut us down, Danica? No, I'm going <laughs> to pop in Ashley and ask some more questions. Sure. <laughs> um, so we have a couple other questions. Leading the family has been mentioned a couple of times, but I'm curious, do you see your partners as equal leading your family? I would say absolutely. Yeah. Like uh, she, she takes on a lot of responsibility and a lot of, um, yeah, a lot of what happens around like the business and the home and the boys and where they need to go. I would absolutely say that there's an equal there for sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. I feel like, um, I guess, being like the the provider and, and you know, away working more often, like, um, yeah, I feel like she is absolutely a huge leader in our family. And um, I think she does so many things, like so many little things that, you know, I don't even know about. Um, I think for me, it's it's been a big transition too of like, you know, having that you know, the provider role and working being, being away from the house more often, but like, then when I am home, you know, finding, you know, that leadership role at home too, it's like, it's, it's kind of been a a bit of a journey there too. 
Um, but definitely, yeah, I don't know. It's, I feel like it's a pretty even, even kind of even role between the two of us kind of leading our family. So, um, I feel like we balance it pretty well. Yeah. Sometimes absolutely. I almost feel like, Oh, well, go I was going to just, I was just going to say, sometimes I almost feel like she, she takes on a bigger role because she's there more than, you know, during the day and getting them to and from schools and that sort of thing that than I am. But there's that element of, of trust from her to me, knowing I'm going out and making the right decisions in the day to be able to keep that all going. But then when I do get home, there's there's that some of that responsibility shift where where she's focusing on things that she needs, her needs to be met. And then I get to take the responsibility of of either taking the boys to where they need to be or whatever. Right. So but sometimes I do feel like man like there's, there's a lot of pressure on her as well right that she that she has through the day that we don't get to see you know anyway go ahead jeff <laughs> no i i totally agree i was gonna say uh equal if not uh, more on her side of things because like i i pride my wife in the fact that she's a multitasking uh uh multitasking uh, um <laughs> queen like uh i don't know how she does it some days but uh yeah I, I think we have a great balance in our relationship yeah i think that's one thing i always it it was a bit of a, a learning curve for me too was like even like you said henry like that the transition of like like getting home from work and then it was like a transition period or like i had to learn to flip a switch to like you know go from like career work mode to family mode and like it, it didn't just happen like you know snap your fingers it was like something I had to learn how to like to make that transition so uh, I feel like I'm better at it now I'm but I've come a long ways but it was definitely uh it, yeah it wasn't easy it was something I had to learn how long did it take you to um learn that transition still learning it but it took it took years <laughs> I think like I think it probably took me like two years to realize that I needed to like learn a transition to like from work to home and then once I kind of like realized like yeah man like you know I can't just sit at home with my family and be thinking about work all evening you know and as a business owner that's it, it's a lot harder so yeah. um yeah I feel like it took me took me years to really um learn that and whether that's even when I get home if it's just 10 minutes just to like you know, have a shower, or just go and just kind of like, you know, get all those or get those thoughts out of my head or just take a few minutes to, to breathe and relax and yeah, whatever it is, it's, it is, but um, it, it is kind of something you have to learn. Awesome. 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 Um, another question. I love the discussion of on raising strong girls. Do you feel you've had an equal fo focus on raising vulnerable boys? Anybody think, want to start? <laughs> I think so. Yeah. Um, I think that's kind of like, you know, that's what this is all about. And, you know, like being a part of a group like Pints with the Pack is like, you know, I felt years into being a father, I think I kind of realized that I was still learning that side of myself, you know? So it's like realizing the absolute need in, in order to like, to, to express that or help my kids, like, you know, in their upbringing, in their perspective, in their paradigm, like, I needed to go there too. And, you know, I think that was really a big part of, of searching for something a little bit more and, you know, deeper connection with, with the men in my life. Um, so I think, absolutely. And, you know, that's why I'm here today. Um, but definitely, like, I'm, every day, I'm learning a little bit about myself in hopes that, you know, I can be that example for my kids, uh, and for my boys. And, uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, like committed to, to growing in that area of my life every day. Awesome, awesome. Um, Joel, I'm going to have you on the hotspot again. Sure. <laughs> um, Joel, you mentioned how becoming a dad challenged his ideas about self-sufficiency. How else did you become how else did becoming a dad change your ideas about what it means to be a man? Can you say that again? 
I don't know yeah, if I fully mentioned. understood the question. Sorry. Um, Joel, you mentioned how becoming a dad challenged your ideas about self-sufficiency. How else did becoming a dad change your ideas about what it means to be a man? Um, I think it's kind of like I spoke to before, like I thought what it meant to be a man was, um, yeah, like just have, like I said, figuring it out on my own and, you know, not needing support or not needing help, not, um, not needing to show my vulnerability to my spouse or my family. Like, um, I think part of me, like, I don't know where I, I decided that that was the case, but I think somewhere along the line, I thought that that was part of being a man was um, not showing that side of myself, that vulnerability. Um, and I think fatherhood for me anyway, it kind of just, it forced me to like challenge that, you know, there was no way to, I couldn't go on anymore pretending that's what it means to be a man. I, I kind of knew that that was a lie and, um, yeah, just challenging those and uh, one day at a time, like just challenging each one of those beliefs and, uh, and and being okay with being vulnerable, you know, and that's why I like, you know, guys like Jeff and Henry and I have other men in my life too that I've met in the last five, seven years, like that I've been able to open up to um, and realize that it's okay. And, you know, they maybe were going through the similar thing. And then every, every time I've done that, you know, I'm more okay with it. And I realize that it is a strength. It's, you know, vulnerability isn't a weakness. Um, it is a strength. So I think changing my belief about that is going to have an effect on my kids. Awesome. awesome. Um, Henry, I'm going to pick on you for two questions. <laughs> um, do you think your children felt what you felt on the inside when you were struggling? You may have asked this a little bit, but if you want to expand on that. Oh, you're muted. Sorry, but that was on mute. Um, I don't know if they struggled exactly the way I struggled on the inside. I don't know if they quite understood. Um, but yeah, they definitely did have a struggle that they went through, right? And, and uh, I'm sure the question of why does dad need to be drinking? Why is he not present? You know, am I not enough? Um, and, and all of that. So yeah, there's there's definitely they they may have felt the same kind of pain that i felt yes right um but just with questions and wondering why maybe they weren't enough or or why i choose to check out or, or even like maybe feeling bad as to why i'm choosing to live that sort of a lifestyle right or, or what the problems were so that's awesome. a pretty hard um hard question yeah Thank you for sharing. Um, it sounds like your son has forgiven you. Do you feel like you have forgiven yourself? Absolutely. Yeah, that's that's one thing that I was able to experience through recovery was was self forgiveness because without being able to forgive myself, there'd still be that um, that lingering um, maybe sense of confidence maybe I would still carry that shame around with me and then that energy would still like be surrounded in my home there had to be a sense of forgiveness for myself and be able to look at myself going oh you know what you are a rock star and you are designed to be a father to these three boys and, and you're gonna you're gonna kill it you really will like it's just gonna be amazing and to be able to step into that authority and know that I've been given everything inside of me to be able to raise these three boys because they're they're mine you know they're they're a gift and that the people around me are a gift as well uh, when I when I go through trials that they're there to support me and to to help me back up and, and to to go from there so but self-forgiveness was the start of becoming a great father because um, without that part if I can't love myself I can only love the way I feel about myself on the inside right so to be able to pass that on to them um, that was that was big and I believe that's partially why um, like it's only been five years now um, since I've I've been sober which is, it seems like a long time, but it still seems like a short time. But to be able to have that relationship that I do now, I believe it stems from that, you know, just knowing that, that I am loved and that I love myself and that I forgive myself. And to be able to walk in that authority um, gives them permission to, to be able to in turn love me and feel vulnerable with me. So, yeah. Well, 
Thank you for sharing. And I have to say, congratulations on your five years. That is a big deal. And you should be very, very proud of yourself. If not, I'm very proud of you. Proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, it's, we're nearing the end of time and we are out of questions. Would you, do you guys have any last words before we wrap up? Um, I don't think so. Yeah, I just want to say thank you to you guys and Danica and, and everyone that uh, that came in to join us. Um, I do want to, and you probably were planning on too, kind of maybe speaking to uh, next week to, to Jackson yeah. Katz. Um, I know. So yeah, um, next Sunday we have uh, Dr. Jackson Katz coming to do a, a little presentation. And to be honest, I didn't know much about him, um, but I I would definitely recommend the uh, listening to some of his talks and stuff on YouTube. Um, he's, uh, I'm definitely excited to, to see him. So um, yeah, I don't know, Danica, if you got any, any kind of anything to introduce him or to kind of say about him for next week, but I think it'll be, it'll be awesome. Yeah, we're super excited. Um, I just want to thank, before we touch on Jackson, I just want to say thank you all for coming to this event. If you're interested in joining the Pints with the Pack group, please contact info at scenariocenter.ca to get some more information when COVID calms down and we can finally meet again. Um, yeah, the next Unpacking Masculinity and the last Unpacking Masculinity um, event is next Sunday, so that's April 25th at 10 a.m. where international icon Jackson Katz will shine light on how violence against women is a men's health issue. He is um Jackson is a researcher and he also talks gives a lot of talks to boys and men on violence and prevention he goes into if one example he does he talks about how um he goes into I don't know, I think I believe he went to Edmonton last year a couple years ago and talked to a um sports team and was in a locker room was in their, their home, you know, how like locker rooms can be a home for like a sports team and gave that talk, gave that locker room talk where a lot of um, sexual violence kind of talk can happen. And was, he taught, um, he's, does research on um, porn and then affects, how that affects men and boys and all different kinds of stuff like that. So yeah, we're extremely, extremely excited. Um, tell everybody, tell your friends, tell your grandma, tell your grandpa. To our neighbors, <laughs> it'll be good. Um, thank you, Joel, Jeff, and Henry for taking our Sunday and being vulnerable and talking about the journey into fatherhood and sharing your experiences and sharing your knowledge. People with lived experience have have the best knowledge. Um, I I personally believe, and yeah, being vulnerable and being authentic and making our community a better place and being community leaders for change. Awesome. With, well, thanks for having me. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Thanks. Uh, thanks for putting this all together, Danica. No worries. <laughs> yes, thank you. I really appreciate it. Awesome. Everybody have a wonderful Sunday. Stay safe and we'll hope we see you all next week. Very Take good. Care. Thank you. Hey, see you guys. Yeah.